Would you join me in prayer this morning? Uh, God, we just thank you for this morning, this, this holy moment that we can come before you. God, we declare that whatever your word is, you, you said in scripture that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your words shall never pass away. And God, even though things are being shaken in our culture, things are being shaken on Maui, God, we know that your word holds fast, that you are our rock, that you are our refuge in time of need. And so, God, we come before you this morning. Thank you so much for uh, preserving us, for keeping your hand on us. And, Lord, we declare our faith in you. Thank you for your blessings in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Um, I don't know what you guys have done this past weekend. Uh, Joss and I decided to go to Costco uh, several nights ago. It was actually pretty Pretty easy to get to the, the, the front of the line, but we had to wait in this line to get into Costco. And all the toilet paper was gone. We had no toilet paper. But we have a few rolls left at home. I don't know if any one of you are having a hard time getting toilet paper, but there are worse things in the world than not having toilet paper. I was saying on one of the videos that uh, earlier that uh, if you don't have toilet paper, you can use your hand uh, because because... We're not shaking hands anymore, and so it's not unclean. You know, it's not like we're touching each other. You might touch your face and stuff, but you shouldn't be touching your face anyway. So you should just, uh, you know, if you need to, what, use your hand. They do it in third world countries uh, just as long as you wash your hand after. Anyway, um, there is a spirit of fear, and one of the greatest fears is the toilet paper. So I just had to address that. Um, I want you to, to, to read the scripture with me this morning. This is 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. And it says, um, let's read it at the count of three. One, two, three. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about three things that we can do to, to engage in having a spirit of fear. I mean, a spirit of faith. Um, the video video are is the video live oh yeah so you can take sorry sorry so you can switch off that whenever we finish reading then you can go to the live video <laughs> so the first thing is a spirit of power um so spirit of power um god's given us a spirit of power love and a sound mind the first thing that came to my mind uh, about power, how does God work through his people with a spirit of power? And one of the most powerful men in scripture is the prophet Elijah. And so I want to read this scripture to kind of give us an idea of how God can work through our lives with a spirit of power during this time. So um, can you read this scripture together? And afar, a while, the, uh, after a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. When the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Be behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he had came to the, the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Uh, one of the most powerful people that we read about in scripture is Elijah the prophet. And Elijah the prophet himself had a need. And when God decided to meet him in power, he didn't meet him just by giving him what he needed, but he met him through a widow. It was through someone that had a need themselves. And in scripture it says, in our weakness he's made strong. One of the ways that God is going to show himself in power during this time is through people who are in need. If you're uh, sitting at home and you have just lost your job, I've heard of so many different stories of people who have been laid off or who have had to lay other people off, we are in a place of need. And it's in times like this that God can work through our lives in power. So I want to encourage you that if you're in need, God wants to use you as a vessel for his power to work through. So God, to, to provide for the most powerful prophet in the Old Testament, used one of the weakest people to do so. Um, let's continue reading. It says, And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little 
oil in a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she did as Elijah said, and she said, and she and her, he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. One of the things that I want to emphasize is that in this time of crisis, in our time of need, this is not the time to shrink back in fear and to hoard. We're seeing that all across our community, right here in Maui, you can see it on the shelves in, this, in, in Costco and Walmart and Target. Everybody is hoarding for themselves. But the way that God uses his people and works through his people in power is he takes our need. And when we step out in faith and we give out of our need, power flows through us. And it said that, the promise to the widow was that if she gave what she had, that the jar of oil and the flour would not decrease. It would not go empty until the rain fell upon the earth. And right now we are seeing a drought. We are seeing a drought of income. We are seeing a drought of jobs. We are seeing a drought of tourism. And this is the life supply to this island. And in this time of drought, I believe that God is saying to his people, step into the realm of fear, step out of the realm of, I mean, step out of the realm of fear and into the realm of faith. And we do this by looking at what we have and looking at how we can help someone else. Um, in 2008, we had a crisis just like this one. And in that time, Feed My Sheep uh, with Joyce Kawakami and Miles, uh, with the help of all the different churches and our community, we stepped in to help those that were in need. And it was during that time that Maui became the only place, the only island in the state that was a hunger-free zone. And God's provision, there was stories of miracles where uh, people were, where Feed My Sheep ran out of food and they didn't have food to feed everyone, but the food actually did not uh, decrease. It didn't stop and the food was multiplied and God will do the same thing uh, as his people step out. Uh, the second thing is love. What is love? There's this scripture that says, John 3.16, and if you're at home and you're watching uh, let's say this scripture together, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The one thing about this is that God didn't give out of his abundance. He gave out of his scarcity. He only had one son, and it said that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And so God set a pattern for us not to give out of our abundance, but to give out of our scarcity, the, the things that we lack. Um, there's a real need on this island. And uh, just this past week, I've been talking to businessmen who've had to lay off hundreds of people. I talked to a real estate agent that had to, uh, he lost several deals. Um, I've, I've talked to a couple who owns a marketing company that lost all of their business overnight. Um, in, in the video that we watched this morning, uh, worship, the worship video, uh, Lawrence talked about how he had to lay off two-thirds of his, uh, his workforce. And so there are real needs that are encountering us, real needs that are encountering the people of God. And it's in this time that we can step in and we can give. For those of us who have, uh, and even if you feel like you don't have, everyone has something that they can give. God will show his power through our lack. God will show his power through our weakness. So what are you in need right now? If you are in need right now, you are a perfect candidate for God to use during this time. And there's a very practical step that, that, we, can, that we have to be able to do this. But I want to read this scripture. It's a command that Jesus has for his disciples. And, and there's never a time that's more pertinent than right now uh, to, to live out this scripture. Um, read the scripture together with me this morning. It says, Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, 
all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another, if you have love for one another. Um, there's a very practical way that we are going to do this. And we have a, uh, a project called Project 2035. And that project is for you to go into your house and I want you to prayerfully look through your home of what you feel God can use you to supply to someone else. And we have a Facebook give and receive page, but we're relabeling it Project 2035 because Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so as you go through your home, there might be some canned goods. There might be, um, I don't know, a lawnmower or something that you have that you, th that you aren't using. Or even if you're using and you feel God tugging on your heart to make that available to someone else, uh, post it on the Grace Bible page. Or you could email us and let us know that you have this, that if anyone else needs it, that they can get it. We don't want to wait till people say, hey, I need this before we meet that need. We want God's people to look for the things that are available, and then to begin posting them so that we can get in front of the need. And so whatever it is that you feel that you can uh, give to someone else, please go ahead and do that. The other thing is, if you do have a need, if you have lost your job and you don't have food or you don't have um, a way to get to the grocery store or uh, whatever it is, post that need, take it. Humility, it takes humility to take something. We're so used to doing everything ourselves, but have humility because God gives grace to the humble. Take it, but as you take it, don't just be a taker. Think about, I'm going to take this, but how can I give back even more? And it could be your time, it could be your talent. Whatever it is, post it, what you can do and what you can contribute. And I believe God will move powerfully through our church body. Um, and then the last thing is a sound mind. And uh, let's read the scripture together. Uh, Psalms 1, verse 2 and 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and all, it, all he does shall prosper. Uh, I just want to say two things about a sound mind. That when you're afraid, you don't think straight. And I was just thinking about this this past week, that what we're afraid of right now is this contagious, this highly contagious virus that has the potential to kill us, right? That's the thing that everybody is afraid of. And that's the thing that, that's the real fear. Um, I, I used to go into uh, Yao Stream when I was a kid, and we used to catch crayfish. And the way that we would catch crayfish is we would get uh, a net, and we would put it behind the crayfish, and then we would scare the crayfish in the, in the front, and the crayfish would shoot right into the cup or the, the net that we had behind it. And so the thing that it was afraid of actually was more damaging to it than the thing itself. And so what we're afraid of is this virus. And what people are doing is just crazy because if you believe there's this contagious virus, the one thing that people are doing is they're congregating in Costco so that they can buy toilet paper to wipe their butt. That doesn't make any sense. That's not a sound mind. That's, that's, I'm afraid of this virus that's going to kill me, so I'm going to risk my life in a crowd so I can wipe my butt. That makes no sense at all, right? But that's what people are doing. And God said, I haven't given you the spirit of fear. I've given you a sound mind. And how do you do that? You meditate in the word of God. I was, uh, this morning before I came here, I just felt like God told me to go back and read the soaps that I had written from the beginning of the year. So I started reading through my soaps in January. And as I was reading through January, the first three soaps had all, everything to do with how to handle my mindset with this pandemic. And it's so crazy. I started reading through all of these soaps that I wrote in January. And it, it's as if God knew what was going to happen in March. And he was, he was writing all of these things to prepare me for it. And I really want to encourage you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some of those soaps and I'm going to Instagram them live this, ne this next week just to show the, um, how amazing it is that God knew beforehand. One of the, the first soap that I had in the beginning of the year was that God uh, designed the Sabbath as a day of rest. And if you look at when God's people got scattered into uh, captivity, it was because they did not practice the Sabbath. And one of the main reasons why we're in the situation that we're in, I believe, is because God wants us to rest. We're so scattered and we're so, we're so focused in work. We're so busy. We're so inundated with social media. 
I believe this is actually, it could be looked at as a gift from God for us to rest and to focus on the things that matter, our relationship with him, our relationship with his word, our relationship with family. And so in this time that we're all, you know, everyone's worried, don't worry. Look at what he's doing. He wants you to get back to the things that matter and enjoy your time with your kids. Enjoy your time with your family and with him. Spend some time in the word. If you haven't soaped and you don't have that backlog of soaps to get into, God wants to start speaking to you now about what's going to be happening two, three, four months from now. And so if you have not jumped into the habit of soaping before, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to plug into his voice and begin to hear him clearly. He's given us not a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And so jump into the word of God to hear his voice. Um,